Good day, everyone. Welcome to the subject, Trends, Network, and Critical Thinking in the 21st Century. Today, we will have a new lesson called Local Networks. Let's start. At the end of the module, the student should able to first describe the meaning of network, next identify the different ways to analyze networks, and lastly, illustrate their own network. For our little introduction, you can see in the screen that you have three passages. Your task now is to choose one passage and then explain it to your subject teacher. You have 10 seconds to think about it. In the passages, it is necessary for the humans to create relationships and not just connections. This relationship that links humans to certain sets of people, events, or objects is called network. Once network influences his or her perception about life, his role in the community and the society, as well as about the essence of his very existence. Networks can be local, global, planetary, neural, and social. So what is a network? It is defined as a group of people whom we interact daily and it happens that each time we take an interest in school, get together, visit from other religious gathering, chat with our neighbors, and interface with the companions on the web, the people whom we trust now is called a network. It is also defined as the set of nodes and set of ties. Some people say that it is like a neuron, and that neuron has different sets of hubs or nodes, and these nodes are representation of our connection and relationship toward other people. So who are now our local networks? So first, we have now family. Based in our 1987 Philippine Constitution, family is a basic autonomous social institution. It is also considered as the foundation of the nation. And lastly, it is the basic institution which public policy cherishes and protects. Family relations include husband and a wife, parents and children, ascendants and descendants, brothers and sisters, whether full or half, and others. For modern sociologists, they have a broader definition of family, which extend to the concept that includes anyone who is part of the family, such as friends, special someone, or pets. For example, friends are the family that we choose for ourselves. It is considered still as an essential local network and support system. In 1987 Philippine Constitution, a state is a community of persons more or less numerous permanently occupying a definite portion of territory independent of external control and possessing an organized government to which the great body of inhabitants render habitual obedience. In your module, you can see now the different levels of the government. So we have barangay, Bayan, Provincia, and then country or state. So, trivia, barangay came from the word balangay. It is considered an ancient boat, national boat of the Philippines. Used by the first settlers, central in trading. So, how do we determine now networks? Networks are analyzed in terms of five things. First is density, hierarchy, embeddedness, interdependence, and lastly, multiplexity. So first, let's discuss density. Density tells us how concentrated or crowded something is. For example, our different population in the different networks. The more the number, the more the density. The next is hierarchy. It is defined as the system or organization in which people or groups are ranked one above the other according to the status or authority. Sometimes people include also the charisma and power. Hierarchy also describes a system that organizes or ranks things. 
often according to the power or importance. Usually, the examples of this are the social class that we can see now in the Industrial Revolution and the famous one, the caste system in India. In the Philippine setting, we have also our own kind of caste system. For example, we have the concept of Datu, Timawa, and then the Alipin. Aliping sa gigilid and Aliping na mamahay. The next is interdependence. It is defined as the mutual dependence between things. Inter means between. We often use interdependence to describe complex systems like marriage, being a girlfriend or boyfriend, or also having a pet. Sometimes we reason out that, that we cannot live with each other. So if you have a dog that provides you love and happiness, you also provide your dog with food and walks. And at the same time, you are intertwined with the relationship. The next is multiplexity. It is defined as the complex in multiple ways. It communicates two or more signals over a common or varied forces. It represents also the extent which two people are bound to each other in different social grounds or groups. For example, the connection of a person to another person. We have the concept of small world. When one meets someone one knows at an unexpected place or finds out that one shares a friend or acquaintance with one another person, sometimes we wonder about the complexity of our connection. So here, in multiplexity, it helps to explain this kind of phenomena. Lastly, we have embeddedness. It refers to the degree to which economic activity is by non-economic or factors. To be sure, business associations themselves are held together by formal relations of power as well as by casual connections, interface individuals crosswise over departmental and progressive limits. Importance of Network Mapping First, it exposes the myriads of power, relations, connections, issues, and its problem. By creating a critical analysis of these networks of relationship, it enables us to obtain a mere complete picture of social situation or phenomena. Lastly, it provides solidarity with our brother and sisters as we consider them as human family, a network, and interdependent to each other. We have two kinds of network mapping. First is strategic analysis and intuitive thinking. Strategic analysis is defined as the process of examining the organization's surrounding and resources and how they relate to each other to formulate a strategy to meet objectives and improve performance using one's rationality or reason. According to Greg Githens, he defined now strategic analysis as the individual's capacity for thinking conceptually, imaginatively, systematically, and opportunistically with the regard attainment of success in the future. Strategic analysis uses analytical tools, namely SWOT analysis, PES analysis, and lastly VCA analysis. These analytical tools will be further discussed in Module 4. Intuitive thinking is defined as sensing or knowing without using rational processes such as reading facts and instruction, making choices and decisions according to one's hunch and gut feeling without knowing the reason why. In Oxford Dictionary, intuition is the ability to understand something instinctively without the need of conscious reasoning. Intuitive thinking is also considered as the quick and ready insight, far more than using more on common sense because it involves additional sensors to perceive and get aware of the information from outside. Sometimes it is also referred as the sixth sense or inner voice that we have. In a Filipino context, this is the famous example wherein we use our kutob when sensing something is wrong or someone is in danger. 
In Module 4, you will have in-depth discussion about strategic analysis and intuitive thinking. But for now, let's define each term. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you learned something from this video lecture. Feel free to ask questions from your subject teacher. See you on the next video.